between Bronco Nagurski, weighing 234, the champion of the United States, against Jim Londis, weighing 202, the champion of Europe for the undisputed championship of the world. The official announcer has just introduced the two boys, and they're coming out from their corners to receive the instructions from the referee with their seconds and handlers right there listening in on the conversation. That's Bronco Nagurski with his back to the camera. The two boys shake hands now, with Nagurski coming back to this corner on the left, Jimmy Londis going over to his corner on the right. Jimmy Londis is giving away 32 pounds Nagurski, in this championship match in Convention Hall. They meet out in the center of the ring, back peddling away is Jimmy Londis, a little bit wary, a little bit afraid to get into that referee's hold that Bronco Nagurski seems so anxious to get into to start the proceedings here tonight. Over against the ropes goes Jimmy Londis and he backpedals away because he knew he was in a bad spot there for the moment. It might have been possible for Bronco Nagurski to get in there with a punishing hold. Back in the center of the ring they go into the referee's hold once again each struggling with all of his more than 200 pounds to get the edge of that referee's hold. First one has it and then the other has it with diminutive Jimmy Londis backpedaling away over into the corner, ducking out of harm's way just in time, then coming out to meet Bronco Nagurski in the ring once again and once again the struggle in that referee's but not for long, as Nagurski brings Londa smashing down to the canvas with a wrist lock. But again, Londis ducked out of harm's way just in time. Back into the referee's hold again. It takes some few moments to get this bout started here. Each of these boys is a veteran of the ring wars. Each is a very capable performer, and each is a little too clever to give the other boy much of an advantage. Watch Londis back up, heading over toward the ropes with the referee ducking over there to be sure that Londis doesn't succeed in grabbing that top rope. Of course, if he can, that'll be an unfair advantage. Down he goes to one knee on the canvas once again as a result of that punishing arm bar that Nagurski has on him and with which he forces Londa smashing down to the canvas. Londa, however, is able to keep one shoulder off the canvas long enough to keep out of danger of losing this one fall match. He wrestles and rises and struggles, reaches out with a foot to gain a little leverage from that bottom rope, but the referee was onto his job and kicked the rope out of the way, so he's got to wrestle there. All this time, Bronco Nagurski has held that same hold, that punishing arm bar on Jimmy Landis' left arm. Landis is saved this time by the ropes as he topples over against them and the referee breaks them. Notice the quiet, gentlemanly, orderly way these two boys break at the instructions from the referee. That's quite a treat in wrestling these days, but they don't hesitate to start mixing it up again. Back into the center of the ring and again in the referee's hole, but Londis breaks out of it with a smashing forearm to Bronco Nagurski's jaw. This time, he is walking a little bit to the referee and says that Londis has his fist doubled up, but Nagurski is in there with that series of butts to the midsection. Londis doesn't like that either, and again he squawks to the referee, but they meet back in the referee's hole, right smack in the center of the ring again. It looks like a beat that Bronco Nagurski has on Jimmy Londis, the Greek Adonis now. The referee says it's perfectly legitimate. No matter what it may be, Nagurski succeeds in smashing Londis down to the canvas again and watch him writhe and kick and try and break out of that hold. But Nagurski has it all together too strongly out of it. All he can do is lie there for the moment and hope for the best. He tries to come to a sitting position, but that's just exactly what Nagurski likes, and he smashes him down to the canvas again. They break out of it this time, and Nagurski is taking his time to come to his feet. He's a little bit afraid of a flying tackle from Jimmy Landis, but they meet back in the center of the ring again, a little bit more casually this time, a little bit more slowly. Again, they go in the referee's hole with each of these giant wrestlers fighting for the edge. This time, for the moment, it looked as though Londis might have it, but he took a rabbit punch from Bronco Nagurski and retaliates with a closed fist himself. Up against the ropes goes Londis, and suffering a bit from a series of butts to the midsection from Bronco Nagurski. This is turning into a little verbal war here between Jimmy Londis and the referee. The referee doesn't like Londis' complaints, and Londis doesn't care particularly for the referee. Londis receives another punishing right forearm, two of them, three of them from Bronco Nagurski and claims the friendly protection of the ropes for just a moment. Again he comes out and again it's Londis retaliating with that smashing right forearm to the chin but not for long as he goes up against the ropes from those punishing butts to the midsection from Bronco Nagurski. That's a new type of wrestling for Jimmy Londis, you know. Some of the younger boys who were football players in college started this business of butts and flying tackles but Jimmy Londis knows how to defend himself, comes back this time with a leg trip, and 
attempt a reverse toe hold. That isn't doing Bronco Nagurski any good. As a matter of fact, the Bronco doesn't like it and tries to kick his way out of it. Finally succeeds in doing just that. And Londres is a little bit sorry that he did get out of that because it's a very arm stretch there that Bronco Nagurski was receiving. But Nagurski gets out of it all right. Comes up with a leg stretch. Watch that right foot of Bronco Nagurski as he steps on the left foot of Jimmy Londres, who's lying there on the canvas, receiving the questions from the referee. The referee says, can you stand the pain? Do you want to give up? And Jimmy Londres says, no, I can take it. I'll never give up to Bronco Nagurski. I've taken worse punishment than he's giving me right now. And between us, ladies and gentlemen, that's saying plenty, because that's a very punishing hold that Bronco Nagurski has on that right foot of Jimmy Londres. He's twisting it from the left to the right, and then leans over to apply pressure to Bronco, to uh, Jimmy Londres' knee. Jimmy Londres doesn't like it, grabs his own wrist, hoping that in that way he'll ease the pain. Again, shakes his head as the referee asks him if he wants to give up. Tries to come to a sitting position, does break out of it for a moment, rolls over toward the ropes and gets his head out under that bottom rope just in time to save himself from poor punishment from Bronco Nagurski. The referee breaks the two and back they go out in the center of the ring again. Nagurski thought for a moment that Jimmy Londres was going to launch a series of flying tackles off the ropes, and Londres might have had that thought in mind, but he thought better of it, and they went back into the referee's hold, and now each is taking turns at using the closed fist and the forearm to the other's jaw. It isn't doing either one of these wrestlers much good, but there's a side chancery now in the much smaller man's body as he arches his back and then finally throws Nagurski over the top rope himself. That was a grand exhibition of strength, but it didn't do Jimmy Londa because Nagurski came flying off those ropes with the start of a series of, flying tackles. Tackles. A series of flying tackles and it just had to claim the protection of the bottom rope. Pete and the referees hold again in the center of the ring with Londus giving away a little bit, but then he goes crashing to the canvas over Nagurski's shoulder. The second time he crashes to the canvas over the wrong straight shoulder there and ducks out of the way of another one of those flying tackles just in time. The referee counts two, three, four, five as Jimmy Londa stays out on the apron of the ring trying to get his breath and now he's back in the center of the ring, back into the referee's hold once again as they struggle for the advantage. There's a leg trip that Nagurski is taking from Jimmy Londres. Londres is bound and determined. He's going to give Bronco Nagurski just exactly what the giant Bronk gave him just a few moments ago. There's that leg spread there that isn't doing Bronco Nagurski a bit of good this time. He grabs his own leg to try and ease the pain and apparently wants to twist his own leg. Says if there's any leg twisting to be done here, I'll do that, Mr. Londres. But Londres is inclined to argue about it and pulls the leg away and still applies all that pressure that is giving Bronco Nagurski so much pain as he writhes in agony. You can see the pain written on his face as he tries to come to a sitting position directly opposite the camera here. Opening his mouth, his face is a series of contortions and grimaces as he tries to convey to this audience some idea of the tremendous pain under which he's laboring at the moment. He was saved that time by the ropes. It was Nagurski's turn to be saved by the ropes, which have saved Jimmy Londa so many times in the start of this one fall to a finished bout here at Convention Hall in Philadelphia. There goes the side chancery, bringing Nagurski to the canvas, but not for long as he comes out of it with a very punishing head scissors. On Jimmy Londres, watch Londres try and kick out of that, but he can't do it. That scissors is too tightly wrapped around his jaw, and he claims that it's a stranglehold, but the referee gets over there to examine it and says, no, it's perfectly legal. Nagurski is using this as a breathing spell, lying there, letting little Jimmy Adonis try and kick out of it, which he finally succeeded in doing. But now it's up to the two to meet in the center of the ring and get back in that referee's hold once again. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a hard, fierce wrestling bout with good, clean wrestling all the way. A couple of the finest wrestlers in the business right there in the center of the ring giving a grand exhibition of the art to about 10,000 wildly excited fans at Convention Hall in Philadelphia. That's feels again on little Jimmy Londres, and that's a very punishing hold, because if Bronco Nagurski wants to snap it, the result is, or might be, that Londres would crash to the canvas or go over the top rope. 
Jimmy Longus looks in a bad way there now as Bronco Nagurski swarms all over him like half a dozen wrestlers. Jimmy Longus doesn't know from which direction the attack is going to come. We can't see just exactly what that hold is that Nagurski has on him, but it isn't doing him any good. Two boys roll over the ropes with Longus on top. Nagurski stretching that leg out under the ropes just long enough to make the referee break that hold, and Jim Longus doesn't like it at all. Objects to the referee, but it gets him nowhere, so they come back into the center of the ring and quickly back into the referee's hold again. Each struggling to come out on top. If it's possible, it's Nagurski this time. And watch that gigantic strength of Jim Lundus as he foils Nagurski, who tries to bring him over shoulder with that chancery and crashing down to the canvas. It's sheer brute strength alone, plus skill, which is letting Lundus foil Nagurski there in that attempt to throw him over shoulder with that chancery. It's one of the grandest exhibitions of scientific and skillful and strengthy wrestling that we've ever seen. Nagurski gives up and backpedals away in disgust. Coming back into the referee's hold again with Jimmy Lundus applying that side chancery this time. The referee apparently rules that it's a stranglehold. Lundus objects, but still it gets him nowhere. He throws his hands out and appeal to the audience, but then decides that he'll stick to wrestling and comes back into the center of the ring again, again in the referee's hole. Let's see who comes out on top this time. Again, it's Lundus with a chancery over shoulder. He throws Nagurski. Nagurski implies by his gestures that it's a stranglehold. Nagurski holds onto that top rope there as the smaller man, Jim Lundus, Lundus tries to throw him out. Both wrestlers go out over that top rope with Lundus, the first one to climb back into the ring. He's carrying on that personal feud with the referee that has been in existence there since the first bell. They're mixing it up again. There comes that airplane whirl and slam with Nagurski crashing down to the canvas with Jim Lundus swarming over him, attempting to pin those shoulders for the required three seconds. Another airplane whirl, another slam, and once more Jim Lundus is on top of Bronco Nagurski. Nagurski succeeds and kicking out of that one, however, and charges off the ropes with a flying tackle. There's another flying tackle, flooring Jim Londis and forcing him out on the apron of the ring between the center and bottom ropes. The referee starts his count, but Londis doesn't even care to rest. He comes right back in again and is thrown once more by Bronco Nagurski. Again, he crashes to the canvas with that chancery with Nagurski in there, anxious to press that advantage if he possibly can. This time, Londis has gotten around behind him, but it still does him no good, and one once more, he crashes to the canvas using a rabbit punch now and then in an attempt to break out of that hold if he possibly can. He's managing to keep that right shoulder off the canvas. The referee is down there looking to see if it's a fall, but no, he's back up onto his feet again with Nagurski dragging him over to the ropes. And watch that left arm of, of Nagurski's go over London's shoulder. That was a punishing hold if we ever saw one. Yes, it was, ladies and gentlemen. The referee has objected to it. Jim Londis is over in the neutral corner, and Bronco Nagurski is feeling of that injured arm of his, trying to get circulation back into it if he can, and obviously trying to keep it out of harm's way. He's trying to protect it and wrestle solely with his right arm if it's at all possible. He's determined and anxious to finish this bout in just as quick time as he possibly can, because that left arm of his is apt to get him in trouble. There it is again. Londis has the scent of victory in his nostrils, apparently. He knows that he is severely hurt, that left arm of Bronco Nagurski's, and he's pressing in there, anxious to apply all the punishing holes to that left arm that he possibly can. Nagurski saved himself that time by a well-placed kick to the jaw, but Jimmy Longus is pressing in there, chasing after Nagurski, smashing him to the canvas with that airplane whirl and slam. Now apparently deciding to go to work on that arm again. It's that same arm over the shoulder to which he's already applied such punishment. Down to the canvas, Bronco Nagurski goes once more. Watch him try and protect that arm if he can, but no, Jimmy Londres is too quick for him. He gets in there with the airplane whirl, slams him to the canvas again. It looks bad, ladies and gentlemen, for Bronco Nagurski. Watch the referee down there counting. And there is a new champion of the world, Jim Londres, who in his excitement and happiness as his hand is raised now and there are the press photographers from the great networks of newspapers all over the country and the referee is still holding up that hand the official announcer rather of the new champion Jim Lundus the Greek Adonis incidentally that was the second defeat for Bronco Nagurski in six years of professional wrestling and in over 